They may look like rolling steel giants, but beneath the surface, North America's mighty diesel electric locomotives hide a world of fiercely competing designs, a silent battle between two-stroke and four-stroke power that shapes every mile they haul. Subscribe now for more engineering content. In this ultimate guide to locomotive varieties, we'll reveal how a freight train is really a self-propelled generator on rails and why the rivalry between EMD and GE changed the meaning of power. Most people hear only the thunder of the engines, and almost nobody notices the secret that decides who wins the race. The truth about what keeps these machines moving is far more electrifying than it seems. A diesel electric locomotive is, at its core, a rolling generator. The process begins with the prime mover, a massive diesel engine spinning a main alternator mounted directly on its shaft. The alternator does not drive the wheels mechanically. Instead, it produces electricity that flows through a series of control cabinets where modern electronics shape and regulate the power. In older locomotives, the alternator output was rectified and sent straight to direct current traction motors. Today's heavy haul units use insulated gate bipolar transistor, IGBT, inverters to convert the alternator output into variable frequency alternating current for each traction motor. Each axle gets its own motor, allowing precise control and maximum use of available grip. An electrician who has spent decades in the field puts it simply, the diesel just turns the alternator. The real work happens in the motors. Those traction motors, mounted directly on the axles, are what actually move the train. When the engineer opens the throttle, the control system adjusts the flow of electricity, delivering just the right amount of power to each motor. If the wheels begin to slip on wet or greasy rail, sensors detect the difference in speed and the system instantly reduces torque, sometimes applying sand to the rails for extra grip. This wheel slip control is far more advanced than the old relay-based systems, allowing modern locomotives to start heavier trains and climb steeper grades without stalling or damaging equipment. The entire chain, diesel engine, alternator, rectifiers, inverters, and traction motors works together as a single, self-regulating power plant on rails. Understanding this electric transmission is the foundation for everything that follows, from the rivalry between engine builders to the evolution of locomotive types. Two competing philosophies have driven the evolution of North American diesel locomotive engines. General Motors, EMD, favored a two-stroke design, and General Electric, GE, favored a four-stroke approach. Each path shaped not just how locomotives sound and feel, but how they perform and where they excel. A rail historian summed it up, EMD two-strokes offered rugged reliability in a compact package, while GE four-strokes traded simplicity for better fuel economy and a different torque curve. EMD two-stroke engines from the 567 through the 645 and 710 series rely on uniflow scavenging. Air enters through ports in the cylinder liner, swept in by a roots blower, or in later models by a turbo compressor that acts as a supercharger at low speed and as a turbocharger at higher speed. This arrangement delivers strong low-end response, making EMD engines quick to build power from idle. The modular design also allows fast field repairs. Entire power assemblies can be swapped out trackside, a feature railroad shops prized for decades. General Electric four-stroke engines, beginning with the FDL and evolving into the GEVO family, use a conventional valve train with intake and exhaust controlled by cam-driven poppet valves. Turbocharging is central to squeezing more air into each cylinder for efficient combustion. The four-stroke cycle with separate intake, compression, power, and exhaust strokes brings better fuel economy and emissions potential as environmental rules tightened. GE turbocharged engines in the GEVO line met stricter environmental protection agency standards while maintaining high output. These mechanical differences are more than engineering trivia. 
They influence everything from maintenance routines to the kinds of service each locomotive family is best suited for. The two-strokes punch and modularity made it a staple for decades, while the four-strokes efficiency and adaptability set the stage for the modern heavy haul era. The rivalry between these engine cycles continues to echo through every locomotive roster today. Railroads needed a locomotive that could do it all, haul freight across the continent, switch cars in a yard, and keep crews safe and comfortable. The answer was the road switcher. Early cab units like the F-Series looked sleek, but they forced engineers to work blind when reversing. The GP series, nicknamed Jeeps, changed that with their hood unit design. Narrow hoods, walkways on both sides, and a cab in the middle gave crews a clear view in either direction. This made them favorites for both mainline runs and yard switching. As freight trains grew heavier, four axles were not enough. Railroads turned to six axle power. The EMDSD 482 became the backbone of North American freight packing 3,000 horsepower and legendary reliability. Crews trusted its modular electronics and long frame, which made maintenance and troubleshooting straightforward. One engineer put it this way, if you could not move a train with an SD-42, you probably could not move it at all. By the 1990s, horsepower wars heated up. General Electric's Dash 9 series hit the rails with 4,400 horsepower, microprocessor controls, and improved wheel slip protection. The Dash 9's digital brain could sense the first hint of slip and adjust power instantly, keeping massive trains rolling over steep grades. EMD answered with the SD70 Mac and later the SD70 Ace both around 4,300 to 4,400 horsepower, but with a new twist, alternating current traction motors. Alternating current drive allowed each axle to grip the rails more precisely, especially at low speeds or in bad weather. Heavy haul coal and grain trains could now crawl up mountain grades without stalling or burning out motors. For the engineer in the cab, the difference was clear. Modern alternating current units could walk a loaded train up a hill that would have left older power spinning its wheels. Inside the yard, the workhorse changes shape. Here, the classic switcher, sometimes called a butthead, rules the rails. Its end cab design gives crews a clear line of sight in both directions, essential when threading long cuts of cars through a maze of tracks. A yardmaster, boots on ballast, will tell you, Visibility and traction matter more than speed. That is where the slug comes in. Unlike a regular locomotive, a slug has no engine of its own. It is packed with traction motors and heavy ballast. When paired with a mother unit, the slug draws surplus electricity through thick jumper cables, powering its own axles at low speeds. This spreads the mother unit's current over more wheels, boosting grip and reducing wheel slip especially useful during heavy switching or in hump yards. As speed increases and the mother unit's electrical output drops, the slug's motors cut out, leaving the mother to handle higher speed moves solo. Modern yards are also seeing a new breed, the genset switcher. Instead of one big engine, these units pack two or three smaller diesels, each with its own generator. The onboard computer starts or stops engines as needed, running just enough power for the task at hand. That means less idling, lower fuel use, and a sharp drop in emissions. An answer to strict air quality rules in city terminals. Passenger service calls for a different kind of specialist. The EMD F40PH with its boxy cowl and constant speed engine once set the standard for Amtrak. Its engine spun at full throttle even at a standstill generating head-end power for heating and lighting the train. In the 1990s, General Electric's Genesis series took over, trading the boxy look for a streamlined shell and bringing more horsepower and improved efficiency. Today, the Siemens Charger leads the way, meeting tough emissions rules with a high-tech four-stroke engine and alternating current traction motors. Whether moving commuters or cross-country travelers, these passenger locomotives are built for speed, comfort, and reliability, each one a product of its era's demands.
Railroad crews face real risks every time a train crosses a road or rounds a blind curve. That is why the North American Safety Cab exists. Unlike the older standard cab with its narrow nose, the safety cab extends wide and deep, forming a reinforced barrier of steel and heavy framing. This is not just for comfort, it is built to absorb impacts from vehicles, debris, or even a loaded gravel truck. Tests run by Canadian National and others have shown how these wide noses can withstand crushing forces that would have destroyed earlier designs. The cab's windows are made from thick, multi-layered glazing designed to shrug off rocks and ice blocks hurled at high speed. Ditch lights mounted low on the front flash in a warning pattern at every crossing, grabbing attention and giving motorists a fighting chance to react. For the people inside, these details can mean the difference between walking away from a collision and tragedy. In the back shops, a locomotive story rarely ends with retirement. Across North America, frames and carbides built in the 1970s and the 1980s still roll out of the shop with fresh electronics, rebuilt engines, and new life ahead. A shop foreman sums it up. If the bones are good, we can make it work. Rebuild programs often swap out old DC traction for AC, install modern control computers, and upgrade cabs for safety and comfort. These mid-life overhauls stretch a machine's service well past 30 or even 40 years, making the most of every ton of steel. For example, Amtrak's cabbage cars started as F40PHs. Their engines were removed, and they now serve as baggage and control cars, with the original cab up front and cargo space where the prime mover once roared. Each rebuild is proof that adaptability keeps these machines rolling into the future. Locomotives aren't just relics. They are the backbone of North American freight and passenger movement, hauling over 1.7 billion tons annually. As railroads modernize, these machines adapt rather than disappear. Their evolution shapes how goods move, cities grow, and energy is used. The tracks ahead remain unwritten. Thanks for watching.